Robert II reigned as King of Scots from 1371 to his death as the first monarch of the House of Stuart. He was the son of Walter Stuart, 6th High Steward of Scotland and of Marjorie Bruce, daughter of Robert the Bruce and of his first wife Isabella of Mar. Edward Bruce was named heir to the throne but he died without legitimate children on 3 December 1318 in a battle near Dundalk in Ireland. Marjorie by this time had died in a riding accident, probably in 1317. Parliament decreed her infant son, Robert Stuart, as heir presumptive but this lapsed on 5 March 1324 on the birth of a son, David, to King Robert and his second wife, Elizabeth de Burgh. Robert Stuart inherited the title of High Steward of Scotland on his father's death on 9 April 1326 and a parliament held in July 1326 confirmed the young steward as heir should Prince David die without a successor. Edward Balliol, son of King John Balliol, assisted by the English and Scottish nobles disinherited by Robert I, invaded Scotland inflicting heavy defeats on the Bruce party on the 11th of August 1332 at Duplin Moor and Halladon Hill on the 19th of July 1333. Robert fought at Halladon, where his uncle and former guardian, Sir James Stuart, was killed. Following this battle, Robert's lands in the west were given by Balliol to his supporter David Strathbogie, the titular Earl of Athlil. Robert took refuge in the fortress of Dumbarton Castle in the Clyde estuary to join his uncle, King David. In May 1334 David escaped to France leaving Robert and John Randolph, 3rd Earl of Moray as joint guardians of the kingdom. Robert succeeded in regaining his lands but following Randolph's capture by the English in July 1335, his possessions were once again targeted by the forces of Balliol and King Edward III of England. This may have persuaded Robert to submit to Balliol and the English king and may explain his removal as guardian by September 1335. The guardianship transferred to Sir Andrew Murray of Bothwell but following his death in 1338 Robert was reappointed and retained the office until King David returned from France in June 1341. Robert accompanied David into battle at Neville's Cross on 17 October 1346 but he and Patrick Dunbar, Earl of March escaped or fled the field and David was taken prisoner. In October 1357, the king was ransomed for 100,000 marks to be paid in installments over 10 years. Robert married Elizabeth Muir around 1348, legitimizing his four sons and five daughters. His subsequent marriage to Euphemia de Ross in 1355 produced two sons and two surviving daughters and provided the basis of a future dispute regarding the line of succession. Robert joined a rebellion against David in 1363, but submitted to him following a threat to his right of succession. In 1364 David presented a proposal to Parliament that would have cancelled the remaining ransom debt if it was agreed that a Plantagenet heir would inherit the Scottish throne should he die without issue. This was rejected and Robert succeeded to the throne at the age of 55 following David's unexpected death in 1371. England still controlled large sectors in the Lothians and in the border country so King Robert allowed his southern earls to engage in actions in the English zones to regain their territories, halted trade with England and renew treaties with France. By 1384 the Scots had retaken most of the occupied lands but following the commencement of Anglo-French peace talks, Robert was reluctant to commit Scotland to all-out war and obtained Scotland's inclusion in the peace treaty. Robert's peace strategy was a factor in the virtual coup in 1384 when he lost control of the country, first to his eldest son, John, Earl of Carrick, afterwards King Robert III, and then from 1388 to John's younger brother, Robert, Earl of Fife, afterwards the first Duke of Albany. Robert II died in Dundonald Castle in 1390 and was buried at Scone Abbey. Heir presumptive, Robert Stuart, born in 1316, was the only child of Walter Stuart, High Steward of Scotland and King Robert I's daughter Marjorie Bruce, 
who died probably in 1317 following a riding accident. He had the upbringing of a Gaelic noble on the Stuart lands in Butte, Clydeside, and in Renfrew. In 1315 Parliament removed Marjorie's right as heir to her father in favour of her uncle, Edward Bruce. Edward was killed at the Battle of Forart, near Dundalk on 14 October 1318 resulting in a hastily arranged Parliament in December to enact a new entail naming Marjorie's son, Robert as heir should the king die without a successor. The birth of a son, afterwards David II, to King Robert on 5 March 1324 cancelled Robert Stuart's position as heir presumptive, but a parliament at Cambuskenneth in July 1326 restored him in the line of succession should David die without an heir. This reinstatement of his status was accompanied by the gift of lands in Argyll, Roxburghshire and the Lothians. High Steward of Scotland, renewed war for independence. The first war of independence began in the reign of King John Balliol. His short reign was bedeviled by Edward I's insistence on his overlordship of Scotland. The Scottish leadership concluded that only war could release the country from the English king's continued weakening of Balliol's sovereignty and so finalised a treaty of reciprocal assistance with France in October 1295. The Scots forayed into England in March 1296. This incursion together with the French treaty angered the English king and provoked an invasion of Scotland taking Berwick on 30 March before defeating the Scots army at Dunbar on 27 April. John Balliol submitted to Edward and resigned the throne to him before being sent to London as a prisoner. Despite this, resistance to the English led by William Wallace and Andrew Morey had emerged in the name of King John Balliol. On their deaths, Robert the Bruce continued to resist the English and eventually succeeded in defeating the forces of Edward II of England and gained the Scottish throne for himself. David Bruce, aged five, became king on 7 June 1329 on the death of his father Robert. Walter the steward had died earlier on 9 April 1327 and the orphaned 11-year-old Robert was placed under the guardianship of his uncle, Sir James Stuart of Durrasdeer who along with Thomas Randolph, Earl of Moray, and William Lindsay, Archdeacon of St Andrews were appointed as joint guardians of the kingdom. David's succession kindled the Second Independence War which threatened Robert's position as heir. In 1332 Edward Balliol, son of the deposed John Balliol, spearheaded an attack on the Bruce sovereignty with the tacit support of King Edward III of England and the explicit endorsement of the disinherited. Edward Balliol's forces delivered heavy defeats on the Bruce supporters at Deplin Moor on the 11th of August 1332 and again at Halladon Hill on the 19th of July 1333 at which the 17-year-old Robert participated. Robert's estates were overrun by Balliol, who granted them to David Strathbogie, titular Earl of Athol, but Robert evaded capture and gained protection at Dumbarton Castle where King David was also taking refuge. Very few other strongholds remained in Scottish hands in the winter of 1333, only the castles of Kildrummy, Loch Leven, Loch Doon, and Urquhart held out against Balliol forces. In May 1334, the situation looked dire for the House of Bruce and David II gained safety in France. Robert set about winning back his lands in the west of Scotland. Strathbogie came over to the Bruce interest after disagreements with his fellow, disinherited, but his fierce opposition to Randolph came to a head, at a parliament held at Dersey Castle in early 1335 when Strathbogie received the support of Robert. Strathbogie once again changed sides and submitted to the English king in August and was made warden of Scotland. It seems that Strathbogie may also have persuaded Robert to submit to Edward and Balliol. Sir Thomas Gray, in his Scalar Chronica claimed that he had actually done so, and may explain his removal as guardian around this time. The Bruce resistance to Balliol may have been verging on collapse in 1335 but a turnaround in its fortunes began with the appearance of Sir Andrew. 
Murray of Bothwell as a potent war leader at the Battle of Colblian. Murray had been captured in 1332, ransomed himself in 1334 and immediately sped north to lay siege to Dundag Castle in Buchan held by Sir Henry de Beaumont with the castle falling on. 23 23rd of December 1334, Murray was appointed guardian at Dunfermline during the winter of 1335-6 while he was besieging Cooper Castle in Fife. He died at his castle in Ork in 1338 and Robert resumed the guardianship. Murray's campaign put an end to any chance of Edward III having full lasting control over the south of Scotland and Edward's failure in the six months. Siege of Dunbar Castle confirmed this. Balliol lost many of his major supporters to the Bruce side and the main English garrisons began to fall to the Scots. Cooper in the spring or summer, a 1339, Perth taken by Robert also in 1339 and Edinburgh by William, Earl of Douglas in April 1341. John Randolph, released from English custody in a prisoner exchange in 1341, visited David II in Normandy before returning to Scotland. Just as Randolph was a favourite of the king, David II mistrusted Robert Stuart with his powerful positions of heir presumptive and guardian of Scotland. At the beginning of June 1341 the kingdom appeared sufficiently stable to allow the king to return to a land where his nobles, while fighting for the Bruce cause, had considerably increased their own power bases. On 17 October 1346, Robert accompanied David into battle at Neville's Cross, where many Scottish nobles including Randolph, died. David II was wounded and captured while Robert and Patrick, Earl of March had apparently fled the field. King David's captivity petitions to the Pope 1342-1419 The kings of France and Scotland, Bishops William of St. Andrews, William of Glasgow, William of Aberdeen, Richard of Dunkeld, Martin of Argyll, Adam of Brecon, and Morris of Dunblane. Signification that although Elizabeth Moore and Isabella Boutelier, noble damsels of the Diocese of Glasgow, are related in the third and fourth degrees of Kindred, Robert Stewart of Scotland, Lord of Stragrafish, in the Diocese of Glasgow, the King's nephew, carnally knew first Isabella, and afterwards, in ignorance of their Kindred, Elizabeth who was herself related to Robert in the fourth degree of Kindred, living with her for some time and having many children of both sexes by her. The above king and bishops therefore pray the Pope that for the sake of the said offspring, who are fair to behold, to grant a dispensation to Robert and Elizabeth to intermarry and to declare their offspring legitimate to be granted by the diocesan, at whose discretion one or more chapelries are to be founded by Robert. Avignon, 10 Cal, Dec, 1347 with the king now imprisoned in England and Randolph dead. The guardianship once again fell to Robert. In 1347 he took the important step of ensuring the legitimation of his four sons, John, Earl of Carrick, Walter, Lord of Fife, Robert and Alexander, Lord of Badnick, and six daughters by petitioning Pope Clement VI to allow a canon law marriage to Elizabeth Mewell, even though an English prisoner. David retained influence in Scotland and Robert had his guardianship removed by Parliament and given jointly to the Earls of Mar and Ross and the Lord of Douglas. This did not last and Robert was once again appointed guardian by the Parliament of February 1352. The parole David attended this Parliament to present to Robert and the members of the three estates the conditions for his release. These contained no ransom demand, but required the Scots to name the English Prince John of Gaunt as heir presumptive. The council rejected these terms, with Robert opposed to a proposal that threatened his right of succession. The king had no option but to return to captivity, the English chronicler Henry Knighton wrote of the event. The Scots refused to have their king unless he entirely renounced the influence of the English, and similarly refused to submit themselves to them, and they warned him that they would neither ransom him nor allow him to be ransomed unless he pardoned them for all their acts and injuries that they had done, and all the offences that they had committed during the time of captivity, and he should give them security for that. 
or otherwise they threatened to choose another king to rule them. By 1354 ongoing negotiations for the king's release reached the stage where a proposal of a straight ransom payment of 90,000 mercs to be repaid over nine years, guaranteed by the provision of 20 high-ranking hostages was agreed. This understanding was destroyed by Robert when he bound the Scots to a French action against the English in 1355. The capture of Berwick together with the presence of the French on English soil jolted Edward III into moving against the Scots. In January 1356, Edward led his forces into the southeast of Scotland and burned Edinburgh and Haddington and much of the Lothians in a campaign that became known as the burnt candle maze. After Edward's victory over France in September, the Scots resumed negotiations for David's release ending in October 1357 with the Treaty of Berwick. Its terms were that in turn for David's freedom, a ransom of 100,000 mercs would be paid in annual installments over 10 years. Only the first two payments were completed initially and nothing further until 1366. This failure to honour the conditions of the Berwick Treaty allowed Edward to continue to press for a Plantagenet's successor to David, terms that were totally rejected by the Scottish Council and probably by Robert himself. This may have been the cause of a brief rebellion in 1363 by Robert and the Earls of Douglas and March. Later French inducements couldn't bring David to their aid and the country remained at peace with England until he unexpectedly died on 21 February, 1371.